I like it here. Oh, good. Is it because Senior Scratchy is such a good listener? No. It's because it's quiet. You're quiet, Agnes. Hey guys, and welcome back to Constant Review. And in the last episode of WandaVision, episode 7, we finally got a huge reveal to something fans have been suspicious of for a really long time. And so, without further ado, let's break into the character of Agnes and how she fits into the MCU and what the great plan might be. So, thanks for watching. Let's jump into the episode now. So guys, as always, before we dive into the show, make sure that you've watched WandaVision up to at least episode 7 before watching this episode, otherwise there's going to be a lot of spoilers ahead. But now that I'm sure that you've all done that, let's jump right into the show. Hey guys, and welcome back to the show, and in this episode we're going to be dissecting episode 7 of the show, Agatha All Along, finally confirming that Agnes, Wanda and Vision's next door neighbor, is actually the witch from the comics, Agatha Harkness. And I know how you were feeling about this huge reveal, but when I saw it, I had a huge amount of relief because after the first six episodes of WandaVision, we've been getting hit over and over again with hints that Agnes is actually a witch, that finally they gave us some closure and confirmed that that is in fact the case. The name's Agatha Harkness. Lovely to finally meet you, dear. But along with this huge reveal, we also find out that Agnes has actually known that this has been an alternate reality the whole time. And that means that every sentence that she has said throughout the show definitely intentionally had double meanings associated with it. But where has Agatha been this whole time? And why is it not until now that she's finally revealed herself in the MCU? And I think the answer to that has already been told to us very, very early on. Of course, forgive me for not stopping by sooner to welcome you to the block. My mother-in-law was in town, so I wasn't. <laughs> so This is seemingly a throwaway line given to us by Agnes when we first meet her, and it's really out of character because every single time we see Agnes, she's usually doing things very deliberate. And a lot of the sentences that she says deliberately have double meanings associated with them. Look, it's the star of the show. <laughs> and so why would Agatha deliberately throw out this line if it had no meaning? Unless of course it does have meaning and we just can't see it. But let's pick apart the sentence that Agatha says. She says that she could not come sooner because her mother-in-law was in town. So that first means we have to look at who is Agnes's husband. Let me tell you what Ralph could really use is how to goose your wife so you don't lose your wife. Lying about the place. <laughs> not that Ralph ever wants to eat anything other than baked beans. Are you sure you don't want an audience volunteer named my husband, Ralph? Oh. But Ralph looks better in the dark, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> Ralph sprays it on me every night, but there's no taming this tiger. Ralph says I sugarcoat things. So who is Ralph? Is Ralph even a real person? Despite being in Westview for seven full episodes, we have still never seen Agnes's husband. And so who is her husband? And while there have been many theories circulating around, including Baron Mordo or Director Hayward, the most likely answer for who Agatha's husband is, is of course, Mephisto. <laughs> the devil's in the details, Bev. That's not the only place he is. Agatha all but confirms this by saying her wedding anniversary is June 2nd, famously the date of the beginning of the Salem Witch Trials, in which a bunch of witches were accused of trying to marry the devil. But then who does that make Agnes' mother-in-law? And the answer is no one, really, because Mephisto doesn't have parents, at least as far as we know from in the comics. But of course, what if Agatha did not mean her literal mother-in-law? What if she meant it in a more figurative sense, as in the person who helped 
raise or train or possibly teach her or her husband. And if we interpret it that way, this points very clearly at one specific character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that, of course, is the Ancient One. The sanctuary of our teacher. The Ancient One. The Ancient One? Uh, thank you, Ancient One, for seeing me. You're very welcome. This interpretation actually makes complete sense. Agatha says she didn't come to town earlier or she wasn't around earlier because her mother-in-law, aka the Ancient One, was still out there protecting the world. Since we know these sorcerers and the Sorcerer Supreme are dedicated to protecting their reality. Our jobs. What is your job exactly besides making balloon animals? Protecting your reality, douchebag. Okay. And this ties together Agatha Harkness's backstory. She is a former sorcerer trained by the Sorcerer Supreme hundreds of years ago who has long since gone wayward and has chosen a much darker, darker leader. Learning of an infinite multiverse includes learning of infinite dangers. And if I told you everything else that you don't already know, you'd run from here in terror. And almost in a way to confirm this, we see that Agatha Harkness has a spellbook in her basement. A spellbook that seems to be draining Wanda's energy and is somehow being used to perform some sort of dark ritual. A spellbook, I might add, that looks a lot like some of the spellbooks that we see in Kamartage in Doctor Strange. And if we go back to the Ancient One's private collection, there are spellbooks that are missing. And so, what is the spellbook doing that appears to be draining Wanda's energy? What did you do? Snagged on yo magic, bro. Now I have time to hang fit. What has Agatha Harkness been draining her energy for? It looks like they may be using a spellbook to possibly perform a ritual. A ritual that may involve contacting a being from another dimension and bringing him to this world. So guys, there you have it. That's where Agatha Harkness came from in the MCU and what she intends on doing with Scarlet Witch in WandaVision. But is there any way for Wanda to be able to overcome her and defeat her despite her huge, huge head start? Or is it already all over? <laughs> all is lost. Agnes. Agnes, please, come back. Agnes. <laughs> But that's all we know so far about Agnes's evil plan in Westview, and I guess we're just gonna have to find out exactly what happens in the next couple episodes. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode here on Constant Review. Bye. And I killed Sparky too.